Welcome, I'm Dr. Taryn Lupo, and I am going to talk to you today about circumcision. I was at my local Veg Fest, the New Hampshire Veg Fest, and I ran into a lady named Michelle from Your Whole Baby, and on her table was this pamphlet, a Completely Bizarre History of Circumcision. Uh, this pamphlet was pretty darn interesting. It's put out from the, facts, uh, the folks over in Taction, right here. And it has a whole timeline of how circumcision got started in the U.S. and what's going on with it. Very interesting read, but you can read it on their website, which I'll link to. And I wanted to uh, take a minute and talk to you about that before I hop over into the interview with Michelle, where we dig a lot deeper into it. And as far as circumcision, I guess, again, it was a uh, religious thing when it started thousands of years ago. But in current times, people are wondering why we're still doing this. And especially in the U.S., how did it get such a hold where, you know, it was the majority of people were doing this? And when I looked at this pamphlet and I went over to this site, I'm going to share the site with you now. It's over at uh, attaction.org. You look under the history of circumcision and you'll see that there are some very weird <laughs> things associated with American circumcision. And... One of the things, of course, is our, our buddy, Mr. Kellogg, Dr. Kellogg from uh, Kellogg's Corn Flakes, that, that Dr. Kellogg. Um, he was saying it was a remedy for masturbation, and, you know, he was pretty famous about having issues with masturbation. And he thought uh, not using anesthesia was a, a good form of punishment for boys who masturbate. And all this, by the way, all these things I'm going to quote to you actually have the, the information on the website in the pamphlet show you their sources so this is actual stuff so what happened here is there's all these strange medical claims of doctors that um, and and I think you should just go over and take a look because it's a lot and I'm not going to go into every one of them but what are the thing that I found also disturbing in these time and age is just how racist um, circumcision was that the uh, there's a good quote here that a lot of the Europeans, um, you were considered high class. Uh, you know, you were a better Irishman or a better Italian if you were circumcised. It was considered like not being circumcised was what the poor did and the uneducated, the unwashed masses. But what's interesting is, you know, the, <laughs> the AMA, right, one of the head guys in the AMA, is talking about um, the uncircumcised Negro who had an incidence of venereal disease of almost 100 percent from the uh, for the wildly excuse me for the wildly educated Jew circumcision at birth the venereal disease rate has remained the same or decreased so again it was just you know not circumcising was something the poor did or the blacks did and uh, you know it was looked down on the, the cures like this guy saying that um, this doctor put out something saying that he cured paralyzed legs by um, by circumcising and uh, the cure to epilepsy and mental disorders hip joint pain and hernias it was all because of general irritation and masturbation <laughs> so apparently getting rid of the foreskin uh these doctors thought would stop masturbation but uh yeah i don't don't think that ever happened so i just want to point out this it's a fascinating thing i'll link to uh their web page but we're going to dive in deep because in this day and age why are we still circumcising where's this coming from what's it all about so let me take you to that interview i'm with michelle from your whole baby right there and uh, Michelle, you're here at VegFest, here's her table, and you want to tell me what your table's about and what you're doing. Our table is to educate on forced genital cutting of children, which includes male circumcision. And we are here to educate on the functions of the foreskin, the benefits of retaining your foreskin, and the harms of male circumcision, and then the ease of intact care once you choose to leave your child intact, how to then care for them. Okay, so what are the big misconceptions, like, why in everyone in America, you know, thinks circumcision is normal, and where that came from? Because I see a pamphlet called The Bizarre History of Circumcision. Yeah, absolutely. That's, um, in America, a lot of the history with circumcision has to do with 
um, Mr. Kellogg. Um, oh, yep, the good old Dr. Kellogg. Dr. Kellogg, the cornflakes guy, and he gave him a time where in American history where Puritans were still had a huge grasp on how Americans feel and how um, sexually were portrayed, and sex was shunned upon, and masturbation was shunned upon. Circumcision started as a cure for masturbation. It was well known in um, the religious community that you know circumcision has its harm sexually and it was adopted by the puritans to and quaker quaker i'm sorry the quakers to um decrease a man's desire to masturbate and in, inhibit him from masturbating of course that doesn't work but they t tried it anyway and continued and as um you know, circumcision progressed and more people became circumcised because their parents wanted them to be circumcised to prevent masturbation. Um, new diseases would be picked up um, as cures. Over history, it says circumcision has cured um, syphilis. It has also cured blindness over the history. Um, it cures mental illness, epilepsy, hernias, um, and masturbation, which was deemed to be an issue at that time. So, and it's just continued now because um, in the late 80s, early, I mean early 80s, late 70s, there was a statement by the American Academy of Pediatricians suggesting that the benefits of circumcision are not enough to warrant the procedure. Um, so basically the procedure should cease in the United States. But within a few years, the American Academy of Pediatricians decided that they would gather a task force together to gather all the research about circumcision and make a statement. Unfortunately, the statement was from a somewhat biased community. There, there was kind of a strong arming when the roles were taking place and some of the neonatal and the people who were pro and tax were just kind of forced to leave the, the group. So there was a, a dispute, but the people that wanted the surgeries to go on, I assume there was a financial incentive to keep those things going. Yes, and there's and the liability of from the American Academy of Pediatricians that this has been continuing. So there's a liability that they have been allowing this for so many years, and to say now that it's unwarranted and unnecessary, and you know it damages the male penis, would then mean that they were responsible for damaging so many people. Years in the past. and years yes, of it. Yeah, exactly. I, it's kind of like the dental profession or whatever that they can't yes. admit mercury is bad or whatever. Yes, it's because, because then, you, then you'd have all that liability yes, for saying you did. Precisely. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, how did it become such the norm that? Uh, and uh, let me also ask you, what are some of the reasons people say they circumcise that are not really founded in science? Okay. So, I mean, when you ask people nowadays, you'll be shocked at some of the horrible things they have to say about why they're choosing to circumcise their sons. Um, I hear a lot, well, that's my preference. That's my sexual preference. That's what I am doing to my son. Well, your sexual preference should um, be kept in your sexual situations, not carved into your child's genitals. Or, um, you know, it's cleaner. Well, it can just be washed with water. You can just clean your genitals like a woman cleans her genitals with water. It's 2019, we all know that we have showers, and even if you didn't, you can simply wash with water from the sink. Um, the HIV claims, um, they're a little more complex. There were two studies done in Africa about HIV to see if circumcision could decrease a man's risk of HIV. And there were two studies majorly done, and one was they had two groups, the circumcised and uncircumcised men, and the circumcised men were given free sex education and free condoms. And the other group of intact, not circumcised men were given no sex education and no condoms. Also half the study, both both studies, half the um, survey group was lost during the study. Uh, okay, so the, the, the study was very unquestionable. E yes, and just, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of studies that get through like that. Yeah, that, and then the that, media, mainstream media picked it up and also and it says... just run it's with a, it without yes. actually looking at the study. It said reduced, the mainstream media picked it up and was reporting that HIV reduced your risk of, uh, well, circumcision reduced your risk of HIV by 60%, but that was really a relative risk. Um, it doesn't actually, it actually reduced your risks by like 
not enough to warrant the yes. surgery. Yeah, and that's that's a big thing is, you know, um, I, I think the guilt, this is such a taboo subject that there's a lot of guilt that parents don't think about it. They just do it because, hey, daddy looks like this. I want it to look like that daddy. That is the and, number one reason I would say it They just go with it. And the pediatrician says it's fine, so it must be safe. You know, um, and I think that um, hopefully that's changing a little, that people are asking it why. It is. In my and personal experience, it's changing. Unfortunately, there is no national medical organization or any government organization at all um, tracking circumcision numbers. So there is no organization tracking deaths from circumcision, um, complications, or how many circumcisions are even taking place. So we actually have no true idea how many circumcisions are taking place the last numbers were from 2012 and they're not really that accurate so yeah you can't really tell if it's reversing or not but i yeah. do feel like your message is getting out Absolutely. more no and it at is. least it at is. least parents are kind of at least talking about it so yes. if they want to find out more information and want to at least open this conversation before you know um have a rationalist discussion because i will say and i hate to say this on camera that as a circumcised man i'm pretty annoyed that i didn't get to make that choice for myself you know, it'd be one thing if I was an adult and got to experience sex with it and without it. Like, yes. if you talk to someone who's gotten have. it. Have you talked to someone who's an adult that yes. had it and then doesn't have it? Yes. What do they say? My, um, a friend of mine that I met protesting circumcision um, had, circum had been circumcised at 18 years old. And he reached out to his doctor. I mean, he was not. He's not pleased. He was not told that it would decrease his sexual pleasure. Uh, it was more of like a cultural peer pressure type thing. Right. And, you know, the doctor. That some was, women do not like it, and it scares them, and whatever. Yeah, I actually American don't know if it was a sec anything sexual that led him to it, um, but he, it was recommended to him by his doctor, and he went ahead with it, and he immediately was very concerned with the results. And you know, it was a, a standard, normal, ideal circumcision, but he. As a person who had been, you know, sexually active, well, now was feeling the difference. He knew the difference. He's in this documentary, actually. I've met him personally, and he is a friend, but he is... He tells his story a little more in this documentary. It's on Netflix currently. Oh, okay. Yeah. Check it out on Netflix, yeah. guys. American Circumcision. So, I can... At least if I remember right, it's been 20 years since I've had anatomy, but as a doctor... If I remember right, the foreskin per cubic centimeter has more neuron endings than any other tissue in the body. Yes. So you're immediately cutting off the most pleasurable thing you can. Yes. And, and the and biggest... That, to me, is like a tragedy to the, think... The sexual damage How is, much better would sex would have yeah, been? Yeah. The sexual damage is it's incomprehensible. And honestly, it's um, one of the driving factors. Once you realize how much damage is done just in a standard perfect ideal it. circumcision the damage that is done the like penis it. is supposed to be a moving like organ it's not supposed to be a stagnant organ the skin is supposed to glide on the shaft so when it moves that causes pleasure for the man and the woman because it's actually gliding like yeah versus friction being built up and when a study was done to test um, where the most sensitive part of the man's penis was and they first tested um, on the glands well, a man's glands aren't so sensitive, but that was um, the part that they were testing to compare, because it's like basically the only part that they both have. But when they tested below where the circumcised man was, his most sensitive part was his scar. On an intact man, his most sensitive part is the rigid band, a part that is completely removed. And that is, the rigid band is right where the foreskin, uh, the outside of the foreskin turns inside. That and, is the truth. Yeah, and when sure. you are flaccid that part would be like right at the tip of your penis but when you are erect every man's different because every penis is different but your your rigid band may be on your shaft it may be a little bit below your glands typically your glands may be showing yeah absolutely um, but that should, i believe that yeah and that that's the most that's the pleasure center okay so for people who want to find out more about this how do they find you and tell me where to find you online yes um i organize a group i organize locally for a group called your whole baby so i do the your whole baby of new england Where's, chapter right, right here yeah. There we go. All right. There's the so name. So I'm from Massachusetts, but I do the whole New England area. And I also volunteer for another group called the Bloodstained Men. Oh, and geez. they protest. I know. It's shocking. <laughs> That's but, a little know, shocking name. Okay, they, they are victims of male genital cutting. And this um, group start, was started in response to um, the AAP's 2012 statement about the right. benefits of circumcision outweighing the risks. 
and they protest around the country, 50 states every year, um, and outside medical conferences, the AAP and ACOG conferences, and their job is to get the word out publicly, and at Your Whole Baby, we are aimed at educating parents and support for parents. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate thank you. your time. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching. I got all kinds of uh, other health stories and stories just about on anything, really. Gardening, farming, uh, shoot, philosophy, whatever. You name it, it's over there. Just click and keep looking around my channel. And as always, be nice to your foreskin, I guess I should say, <laughs> and your cat. <laughs> and, and your cat's foreskin, there you go. Um, so be nice to each other. <laughs>